Hello, I'm Eric. And I'm Melissa. And as our series on the Sega Master System nears an end, we thought it would be appropriate to see how the Sega Master System gained a little bit of extra life on the Genesis with the help of the power base converter. Little extra power. Little extra power, yes. Um, this is something that came out at the launch of the Genesis and it allowed you to play Sega Master System games on the original Model 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I heard about this, I said, I have got to get a Genesis because <laughs> then I can play Genesis and I can pop this in and it's like having my own Sega Master like System. It's backwards compatibility. It's backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, it is well known at this point that the Genesis actually has all of the Sega Master System hardware in it. The power base converter is really nothing more than a uh, cartridge adapter mm -hmm. and a, uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but a pin that basically tells the Genesis to go into Master System mode. Um, the main CPU of the Master System is the sound chip controlling CPU, or the sound, it's a, it's a Z80, and it's uh, primarily used, I think, for controlling sound on the Genesis. But um, let's, uh, so I've got the uh, power base converter here. Mm -hmm. Let's take a uh, closer look and unbox this Ooh. bad boy. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. So actually, let's take a look at the box first. So mm -hmm. this is pretty typical, I think, of Sega boxes at the time. Uh, picture on the front. Picture on the uh, on the front here, I guess, the top, and then some Master System pictures on the uh, both sides, showing a, a vast array of. Yes. Uh, Master System games, and then of course there's some description of what this thing is on the back. Now, could it play the cards too? The little cards? yes, it can. Get there's a, there's a card slot right here, and uh, a pause button to take the uh, place of the uh, uh, Master System pause button. And I believe it will even work with 3D glasses. There are just a couple of things that the power base converter won't work with, and we will mm. talk about that in a moment. So, okay, pop the lid. Is this yours? This is mine. Just got this this year, right? Oh, oh, at yeah. PRGE. That's right. I should have remembered that. Yeah. Manual. We will look at in a second. And as with the other Sega things <laughs> that we have gotten, it comes in styrofoam. I think the best idea is to flip it. Okay. And let it pour out. This way. I'll pour out all the the Sega goodness. Yes, it is Sega goodness. Let me get that. Yeah, go ahead and close that off. All right, so we've got styrofoam on each side here. Boom. And the bag. Wow. I don't know if this is the original bag or not. And this is it. Now, based on the pictures, it didn't look, it kind of looked flat to me, but it is not flat. This is a monster that sits on top and it's because the mass system cartridge has to fit in here and there's got to be mm -hmm. things. So the cartridge snaps right into the top That's it. and the card slides right into the front and here's the pause button and I will I will demonstrate it uh, snaps right onto your Genesis look at that and uh, when you want to play master system games you pop them on and when you want to play um, Genesis games you pop it off and actually, because I knew how this worked, when the 32X came out, I thought that was how the 32X would work, too. You had to remove the adapter every time you wanted to go back and forth, but thankfully that wasn't the mm -hmm. case. But for this guy, you had to, uh, you had to uh, take it on and off as you wanted to play. And then there's this other thing. This is this little ferrite core, which I think is for the three glasses. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to use them. It's, it's used to prevent interference. And I think there's supposed to be a little screw in the back here, which would be a real pain to screw and unscrew every time, mm -hmm. but um, like to keep it there's steady. no screw there, yeah. yeah. And because of this form-fitting nature of this, it doesn't work on the uh, Model 2. It oh. doesn't fit physically. Now, I took a hacksaw and hacked off the back, <laughs> and it'll work. It'll work. Uh, it doesn't fit right, and it's a little loose, but it technically, I think it still works. So, wow. Um, Anyway, I, I, I don't you, recommend I, it. And but. I can't believe you. That's like, you damaged. I know, I know. Well, we had a couple. Uh, so, uh, okay. and we only had a Genesis Model 2, so I really wanted to try it out, so I hacked it apart. Mm. Um, I did want to look at the manual to discuss briefly. Uh, it does cover some of the, uh, the games that don't work here. Oh. And I will, um, I'll read some of them off. 
Um, some of the games don't work because of the control pad. Uh, the Genesis uh, uses a multiplex thing. There's too many buttons and things here for the number of pins, so they kind of toggle between sets of buttons. And the, some of the Master System software doesn't work with that properly, and so when you uh, when it detects or when it does this in a Genesis controller, there it can't read the buttons inputs properly. So um, some of the games like Great Volleyball, Shanghai, Alien Syndrome, Wonder Boy in Monsterland, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, Montezuma's Revenge, and Bomber Raid won't work. And then more interesting is the game F-16 Fighting Falcon, which we talked about in our Sega cards. Mm -hmm. That won't work because that uses a video mode that exists on the Master System video chip, mm -hmm. but does not exist on the Genesis. The Genesis only has the one main Master System video mode, which F-16 doesn't use except for the title screen, and so the game won't play. Uh, but other than that, you got a pretty, a library, pretty good amount yeah. of uh, compatibility. And so um, this is a great peripheral. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it was uh, intended by Sega to help ease the transition uh, into the Genesis and, and kind of bolster the library. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Master System wasn't very popular. So I'm not sure how much it really helped. And of course, by the time they got to the Model 2, they didn't care about it working with the yeah. power-based converter anymore. The Genesis was far and away more successful than, uh, than to worry about... Um, bringing those Master System Bringing those Master them. System mm -hmm. games back over. So that is it. And I guess I, I will mention that there are now third-party um, things that are equivalent to the power-based oh. converter. There are... Um, devices that are that are the size of Genesis cartridges that will fit into any Genesis uh, Model 1, Model 2. I'm not sure if they work in the Model 3, but they will fit, and then you plug a Sega card directly into that. The disadvantage of those is that they won't, they don't have a card slot at mm -hmm. all. So any cartridge-based game, though, will work. Mm -hmm. So there are some third-party alternatives now that will work with the, that will take the place of this, this bulky guy. Okay. Okay. So that is it for our look at the power base converter. All right. Well, we hope that you've been enjoying our video series, and we have a few more videos that are going to be coming out. We hope you continue to watch them and join us as we celebrate 30 years with the Sega Master System.